Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to video two and my new series of drawing tutorials where I turn every single letter of the alphabet into an animal that starts with that letter. In today's video, I'm gonna turn the letter B into a beaver like you see here using the iPad and Procreate. And let me know down in the comments what suggestions you have for animals going forward for the rest of the letters and you might see your idea come to life in a video here just like Irish Luck 112211 that suggested the beaver for today's video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's tutorial. All right guys, so let's go ahead and draw a beaver for the letter B. Starting out, I'm using a 4,000 pixel by 4,000 pixel 300 DPI canvas. It's an RGB canvas. For my brushes today, I'm gonna be using my essential creator set for Procreate. This is available on Gumroad, links in the description below. And we're gonna start out sketching with the sketch brush. We'll move over the smooth inker and then use the soft rendering brush to do our shadows and highlights. And then also for the color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made. So if you want to download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's video, you can find that for free on my website. If you go to bjdell.com underneath the YouTube reference materials page, that's also linked down below, you can download that for free. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is bring in a B here. So we're going to go up to our wrench icon. We're gonna go over to add, and then we're going to add text. And then we're just gonna do a B here for our text. We'll go ahead and highlight that by double tapping, and then I'm gonna change the font to this. We'll go for Arial. That's what I'm gonna use for the whole series, is Arial, and we'll switch over to bold. Now I'm gonna grab my arrow here, we'll make this bigger. that there in the center and then hitting the layers menu to lock it in there now that that's done I'm gonna bring up the blend mode here hitting N and we'll bring down the opacity we want to use this as a guide we want to be able to see it but not too dark all right with that done then we can start our sketch on top of this so we'll go ahead and drag layer one on top of the text layer once again, using black here in the color palette and that brainstorm sketch brush. So I'm thinking, kind of looking at this, he's going to be looking off to the side here, kind of. This is going to be the shape of the head here. This is going to be the belly coming up and around. So kind of just start sketching in here. Kind of moving as a go here. Twisting things around. Start bringing in the shapes here. I think this big opening here, this will be the mouth. So we'll kind of get that sketched in. Just like that. Pulling the beaver teeth here in the center. Have his tongue kind of coming from the back here. It's kind of tucked behind off to the side. Just like that. We'll start to get some ovals in here. Gonna block out where the eyes are gonna go. Yeah, maybe move that one over just a little bit. We'll get the nose in here first, so that helps us center the eyes. And once we got the ovals there, then I'm going to zoom in just a little bit tighter so we can see better and kind of darken these up and around heavier on top. And then kind of breaks off and then lighter there at the bottom, just like that. Right from here, we can go ahead and get the irises in. Inside there, we'll go ahead and get the pupils. And this part of the drawing process is just a sketch stage. So everything's supposed to be really loose, really light, really sketchy. We don't have to worry too much about getting all the fine details dialed in. That's what the inking process is gonna be for. We'll throw some hair on top of there. 
give him some eyebrows here. And that surprised look. That's pretty cute. Then from here, we'll go ahead and draw some ovals for the ears. So one on the right there, and then one on the left here, just kind of blocking them out. And then we can go in and just darken those up. Move that down just a little bit so it didn't hit the edge there. All right, looks good. And I think here we'll go ahead and kind of follow this down from the head. This will be the arm as it comes down. Kind of form down into here and go back up into the armpit right there. Pull some fingers here and his thumb, just like that. This other opening for the bee here, I think this will just be the belly, and we'll have this be a different color. Let's bring that around and then we'll continue here following the line and this will go down into the legs and the foot. Just bring a curved line here for that foot, Maybe a couple lines in here for the toes. We'll bring this line back and around for the belly. And then we'll have another foot here, just kind of tucked in behind. I don't think we'll do another hand there because it'll kind of offset the shape of the bee. So if we keep it like that, I think that'll be good. And then finally, we got to get the beaver's tail in here. So we'll kind of pull this around, which actually I think I might shrink everything down. So if I go up to my layers menu here, I'm going to slide these both to the right. So they're both blue, they're both selected. And then going to the arrow here, will allow me to kind of move everything and shrink it. So that way I've got a little bit more room there for the tail. It was cutting off there on the edge just a little bit too much. I wanted to make it a little bit bigger there. One of the great things about digital art is being able to make little adjustments like that. All right, and there we go. I think overall that looks pretty good. So that's gonna be our basic sketch. So from here, what we're ready to do is move on to the inks. So let's go ahead and do that now. So to begin the inks, what we're gonna do is come up here to our layers menu again. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off that background B there, and then we'll make a new layer on top of layer one. We're gonna do the same thing here as we did with the text. We're gonna drop the opacity of this, whoops. I'm on the wrong layer. We're gonna drop the opacity of our sketch layer here. We'll bring that down to, we're from 20 to 30%. We wanna be able to see it, we just don't want it to be too dark. Now that we've got that done, back to layer three, we're ready to start our inks. So I'm gonna come back up here to my brush library and I'm gonna switch over to my smooth anchor. That's gonna be the brush that we use for this one. We're on layer three. I'm gonna drop the size of this down. I've got two presets in there. The top one is set at, I think, 11%. Bottom one set at seven. So we'll use the 11 to begin with. And then I think I'm gonna start here from this line and bring this curve around. So you'll see I'm gonna twist the canvas just so the way that my arm wants to, to go naturally is starting in a direction like this. And you'll see I'll also start further back than what my line's supposed to be. So that just gives me a lot of control over the pressure that I'm starting with and the direction and just getting the, the beginning off to a good start. So we'll bring this around up to the top. And I went a little too far there, so I'm gonna try it another time. You'll see a lot of times I will go back and erase and, and redo a line a few times just to get it perfect. I want the, the flow of it to work. I want the edges to, to look right and doing it a few times. Once again, beauty of digital art is you can do that without you know messing up anything or having to go back in a race. So now that we've got that, I'll go ahead and do the same thing down here for this one. But I'm gonna make a new layer here because like I said, starting out here further than what I wanted to, 
gives me the ability to go to the eraser using that smooth anchor. I can pull this line back now. Using this new layer here, I can start this line further up here to get my stroke going in the right direction. And then I can erase the overlap without touching that line that I just did. So with that new layer made now, I can go back to my inking brush here. I can bring this around just like that. And you'll see now this overlap here, I can go grab my eraser and erasing this, I'm not hitting that line I just did there. And same thing here, I can erase this back a little bit. Now, doing that line, I can keep these two separate so I can kind of hop back and forth between the two different lines here. So doing the line here for the arm, I'm gonna do that on this layer four. So once again, I can erase the overlaps. I'm gonna go back to my brush here. I'll start up further, kind of higher up here. Bring this down and back up and around one more time. All right, now that we've got that, we can start working on erasing the overlaps. We've got that overlap there. Back to the layers and layer three then, I can erase the overlap here on the side, which here I'm gonna get in a little bit tighter just because I want these to match up pretty well. And if you're zoomed out too far, they'll probably look a little wonky. And then you'll have to go back and maybe just fine tune it so everything lines up really well. All right, and pulling back out, you can see what we're left with. All right, now I'm gonna go and work on these fingers here. So staying on this same layer here, I'm gonna use the eraser and pull out, oops, go on the right layer here. I'm going to pull out just a bit of this, and you'll see why here in a second. All right, now that I've got that kind of shaved down a little bit, we'll continue this line down into this finger here. Getting these lines to match up. Just like that and then back in with the eraser here just to kind of fine tune them and get everything a little bit straighter all right looks good here, I'm gonna race a little bit here, and you'll see I'm gonna make a kind of tapered line here across where those are gonna connect and then continue these fingers around. One here, and then one here coming up. Once again, using the eraser just to meet those together, match them up. And then using the eraser here to knock in that thumb. You can see what we've got there. From here, I'll do a little kind of swirl here for the knuckles coming around. And just like that. All right, continuing on then, let's move on to the foot down here. So we'll switch over to layer three because we can do the erasing again. And we'll pull this line down, around, and back up. Erase the overlap there then by going to layer four, hitting the overlap there, and bringing these lines down, and then erasing the overlap there. I think I'm going to thicken this line up a little bit here in the background for that leg as it comes up there. A little bit too thin. All right. Continue on here with the tail then. Bring this around and back in. And some tapered lines here for the texture in the tail. Continuing here, we'll get that little part there for the 
armpit. And moving back out over here to the other foot. This one will want this to be a little bit thicker here at the bottom. One more time. And the line's here for the toes. All right, looks good. Continuing on, let's see what we want to do next. Let's go ahead and let's work on the mouth next here. So I'm going to drop the size of this down to that seven. We'll go ahead and we'll pinch these two together, the lines that we've got going on. So everything's on one layer now. We'll continue to add layers as we go. So let's make another new layer here. And then we'll bring this line around. Then bringing it down to connect. Eraser then for the overlaps. This one we have to be a little bit more careful on just because that is the same layer there. So any erasing there is gonna affect both. Back to our brush. We'll start here on the mouth one. Bring this line around. Same thing here. We'll just hold down to kind of lock that in. Raise some overlaps there. And here. And then we'll get a tapered line here for the crease of that mouth coming up and around. Tapered line for the tongue. Try that again without locking it in. That looks a little bit better. This one around. And the teeth. Move over a little bit so we're a little bit more straight on for these. And a taper line there for the center to kind of split those up. All right, next up the nose. that continuing on here once again we're on a separate layer here so I'm going to do some overlaps now for the eyebrows still using that smooth anchor go heavier on the bottom and lighter here on the top as those come around it's again just a harder press to begin with and then a lighter press at the top that's how you'll get the difference there we can use the eraser then to shape those a little bit more Moving over here to this side, same thing. Heavier press to a lighter press. Just like that. And I'm gonna move to that bigger size now for the hair here. So we bring those around. And then we can go back in now to the layers menu in layer three and use the eraser for erasing those overlaps. You'll see using those two different layers like that really makes it easy to match up your strokes and be able to erase like this without having the painstaking process of trying not to hit those lines we already did. All right, back to layer four then. And our brush. We'll go ahead here. I'm going to make a new layer for the eyes here. This will speed up things just a little bit. We'll do a light press here for a taper to a heavier press to a lighter press. Just like so. You might have a little ball there at the end where you held down if you locked it in like I did. And you can just go in there with the eraser and just kind of fine tune that. So we've got that then, a little lighter press, smaller line here, which I'll drop the size down for this one. We're not gonna connect these, we're just gonna give the effect that they lock in together. Do an oval here, which we'll hold down to lock in for a circle. And then another one here on the inside, holding down for the pupil. 
And with those done then, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to the Layers menu again. We'll slide this one to the left and we'll duplicate it. And then with that one selected, I'm gonna grab the arrow here and we'll flip it horizontally and we'll bring it over here to the side. I'm gonna twist it just a little bit here. Bring it down, because I don't want it touching there, so we might bring the other one down too. We'll shrink it just a little bit and we'll do the same thing to this one here. Grabbing the arrow, we'll shrink it and move it down. Maybe in a little bit as well. All right, I think those are good. So now coming back up to the layers menu, I'm gonna pinch those together so they're all on one. And then we'll hold down here in the background to select white and I'll just add in some reflections there inside the pupil. Actually, let's have the light source coming in from this way. So we'll have those reflections over there on the right. You can see what we've got. Okay, looks good. On that same layer, let's switch back to our black color here and then we'll finish up these ears. So get these in here, making the brush to the bigger size here. Just lighter press here in the center and then erasing the overlaps, just like that. And then this one over here which actually I'm gonna pull this all the way around. So when I tried to match those up, that was really kind of unnecessary because I am going to overlap those just because of the perspective that we've got going on here. So then we can select layer three now with our eraser and pull those back. And that's what we're left with. All right, so let's go ahead now and I'm gonna turn off the sketch. I'm gonna grab these layers and pinch them all together. So now everything is on one layer as far as our lines go. The sketch is turned off. And then from here, we're ready to go ahead and start adding the color flats. So to begin the color flats, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to our layers menu. I'm gonna come underneath that layer three. I'm gonna make a new layer. And then we're gonna tap layer three and we're gonna set this as reference. So anything we drag and drop color wise into here, it's just gonna use this as kind of a guide as where the colors go to. So now that we've got that done, coming back up to the color palette, we've got the second color here on the first row. We'll grab that and we'll drag and drop that into here. I'm gonna hit continue filling once this comes up. And then from here, you can just tap on the areas we want colored in. We're gonna stop there though, because I want these on separate layers to make coloring easier, or shadows and highlights easier, I should say. So we're gonna make another new layer here. With that made then, let's go with the dark brown, drag and drop that here, continue filling. We'll tap those, and then we'll use this for the eyebrows as well. All right, back to our layers then. I'm gonna make a, another new layer here. Back to our color palette, we've got this lighter brown here. We'll use that for the belly. So we'll drag and drop that in. And then we'll also use this for the insides of the ears. All right, one more new layer again. Back to the color palette. Let's go ahead and use this color here, the red, the first red here for the mouth here. We'll go ahead and use a new layer here because I want every uh, one of these colors separated. So use a darker color here for the inside part. And then one more new layer here for the tongue with the pink. Dragging and dropping the color in there. Now the teeth look like they're colored in, but they're not because we've got the background here. So let's go ahead and make another new layer for the teeth. So plus button for a new layer, back to white, drag and drop that in. And I think with the nose, we'll actually have that colored in black. So if we go back up to our reference layer, 
our lines layer. I'm just going to drag that black into there. And then once again, holding down here to select white, we'll just go in and add just a reflection there on the top on that layer. All right, and finally, we've got the eyes. Obviously, they're filled in brown because we didn't connect those parts. So we're going to make a, another new layer here with that white selected. We'll go ahead and just color this in by hand. This we can't use the drag and drop because it's going to then fill in the whole body back to white. And we don't want that. So bring this around. And then same thing here. If you go and overlap too much, you can just use the eraser to clean up and make sure that all those parts line up. Do the same thing over here. Just getting this filled in, and then after we do this, then we'll add in the colors of the, the iris there on top of this layer. All right, so we've got that. Back up to the layers menu, new layer on top then, and our final color in this row we got this kind of aqua color. We'll use that for the iris. And then pulling back out, you can see what we're left with. So there we go. We've got the color flats done in addition to the inks. So next up, finishing it off with the shadows and highlights. So let's go ahead and do that next. So to begin this process, we're going to come up to our layers menu again. And let's start with the body here. So that B kind of brown shape. We're gonna make a new layer on top of this one. We're gonna tap this and we're gonna set it to clipping mask. So anything that we color in on this layer is only gonna show up on the parts that are colored in on this. So it's not gonna color in out here in the white. It's not gonna color in on the tail or the mouth or anything else. It's just the parts that are colored in on this layer. So with that selected then, we're gonna go ahead and grab this kind of reddish brown color we're going to switch our brush over now to the soft rendering brush. And I've got a few different sizes of this. We'll start it with the, the top one here, which is set at 28%. Like I said, we've got the light source coming in from this way. So we'll have the shadows kind of fall on here and here. Highlights kind of over here. So with that decided on then, we're going to start to pull in some shadows here. We'll see, I've got a lot of control over this. This works very slowly and it doesn't build up too fast. So this gives you the ability to control exactly how much flow you've got coming out of there. That's why I really love this brush. So you can get a, a kind of nice gradient, almost like airbrush look. The airbrush that comes default with Procreate just lets it, everything come out too fast and it just builds up and you're left with a ton of color and you don't have a lot of control over it. So that's the benefits of this brush. Get this slowly build up here, maybe a little shadow here underneath that chin. And then you're going to see, I'm going to hold down the eraser to select that brush that I just used in the eraser form and I'll pull back that shadow there at the top. All right, back to this brush. I'm going to drop my size now and we'll do some shadows here on top of the eyes under the eyebrows and a little bit along this back part of the hair there. Back up to the bigger size here just to make it flow in and control that gradient. All right, looks good. Pull a little bit of a shadow here on that ear and then erase that overlap here. I went too far into the eye, so I gotta build that back up real, real quick there. All right, that looks good. Okay, next up then, let's see. We've got the tail, so layer five, we'll select that new layer on top. Set it as clipping mask using that same color here. We'll start to build up a shadow back here. 
just like that. Next then, moving up, we've got the belly here and the insides of the ears, so new layer. Tap, set it as clipping mask. We'll get a little bit of a shadow here on the bottom. With this, mostly I'm gonna be using a, uh, a highlight there on the top, so I don't wanna get this too dark. Okay. Back up to our layers menu then, we've got the mouth. So we'll select that, new layer on top. Tap and clipping mask. Bring a shadow here along the top and kind of fade it down from the top and the back here. Back to the layers, layer eight. We'll make a new layer on here. Once again, tap, clipping mask. This one for the inside though, I'm gonna switch my color to black. We'll get a little bit of a different value here on the inside. Okay. Back to the layers menu, layer nine, new layer here, tap, clipping mask, and you can see this is just kind of a, a repeat process. Back to that color that we were using before. We'll build up a shadow here on the tongue. I'm gonna drop the size down to that next step though, so I've got a little bit more control. Over the size, all right. Now for the teeth, once again, new layer, tap, clipping mask. And for this one, let's go ahead and use that color that we use for the iris there. Let's get a hint of a shadow there on the teeth. We'll do the same thing around the eyes. So 11 here, new layer. Tap, clipping mask. Flip a little bit of a shadow around the tops and the side there. And then for the eyes, I didn't have this in here, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna add this to the, the color palette here. I'm gonna drop down and add another color here. I'll put this underneath the iris color there. So we can darken these up a little bit. So once again, new layer, tap and clipping mask. I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see a little bit better and we'll add a little bit darker color by dropping the size here. Kind of bring this around the bottoms and the left side. All right. I'm pulling back out, you can kind of see what we're left with. I did forget the inside parts here, so let's go ahead and do those with that darker red color. And that was layer six, layer 15 on top of there. We'll pull in the shadows inside the ears. A little bit too much there. All right. So there we go, we've got the shadows going on. Now let's go ahead then and move into the highlights, kind of using the exact same technique. We've already got these layers made and I'm gonna add the shadow or the highlights to those shadows layers so we don't need to make any more layers. So let's just use that order that we did before. So the, the body here, we'll select that clipping mask layer. We'll go ahead and grab this color here. Got that first yellow. Still using that soft rendering brush, and we'll go to that back to that bigger size here. And we'll throw in some gradients here. Now these should flow really well. It shouldn't be like an exact line or just a big blob next to another color. It should kind of move across there. Really faint and build up as it goes. Along the side here. I'm gonna drop the size of this a little bit more because I don't wanna go over top of some of those that we just did. We'll hit those, same thing here, going across the top of the foot. Building that up, but I want to stay further down because I don't want to hit the, the shadows. I'm trying to save some layers here in case 
Uh, anybody that's watching doesn't have as many layers available. With this, you can see there's got to worry about overlapping that shadow that we did. The best case scenario, scenario here that I would personally use is I would do the shadows and the highlights on two separate ones so I could come in here and erase. If I would erase right now, it's just going to erase those shadows that I already did. So it's kind of counterproductive. Uh, but if you do have the layers available, that's what I would probably recommend doing is doing these on separate ones. But I know we're running into the kind of limits on some people's iPads. So that's why I wanted to stick with keeping them all on one. Let me get here on this cheek, kind of brighten that up a little bit. All right, and the top of this ear here. And the top of the hair here. Okay. And then coming back up here then to the color palette, let's go ahead and use this white color or kind of yellowish white. And we'll just bring in a little bit more of a brighter edge to some of these. All right, I think that looks good. So next up, we've got the tail. So layer 14 here with that yellow color that we had here. We'll hit this just a little bit. It's not gonna have too much just because it is there in the back behind him. So we're just gonna add a tad bit there. Coming back up to the layers then, we've got the belly. So this layer 15 here for the belly. We're just gonna automatically use that white yellow color here. just a gradient down there next up we've got the mouth here I don't think we're gonna do anything to the inside there to the mouth we'll just do the tongue so layer 9 on top layer 18 using that same white and making the brush the third smallest down there just bring in little bit of highlights there on that right hand side all right next up I think too with the tail that we've got down here the eyebrows are on there so let's add some highlights on top of those so that layer 5 layer 14 we're gonna go to layer 14 and we'll add in just a little bit here on these just so they're not just a solid color sitting there they look a little bit weird all right back up to the color palette there are the layers menu then and let's see i think honestly that's going to be about it for the different areas there finally then i'm going to come back down to layer 13 which is the body and the bottom here i've got a darker reddish brown here i'm just going to go over with that soft rendering with the size on that third selection there and just add in a little bit of a darker value here it just kind of brings the effect out of what we did a little bit more just going over really light nothing too heavy and just using that to kind of shape what we previously did there I'm gonna grab the smudge brush here and kind of smudge this shadow in a little bit more and just kind of stop there I think that needs to be brought in a little bit more I'm going to bring the size up and kind of bring these in together too so if you don't like how the colors flow together you can always use that soft rendering brush or the the soft yeah the soft rendering brush as the the smudge tool there and just kind of bring everything together all right that looks good from here you wanted to, one of the last things I always like to do is go into the lines layer again with that black and then the smooth anchor. I just like to sometimes add in some extra lines here and there. We'll drop the size down here. But with the Bieber, uh, if we wanted to add in some, just like some fur lines here and there, I wouldn't go crazy with it, to be honest, but just to add in some some extra character or you know even some some dots here and there just to add in some little textures whatever you want to do to make it your own this is where you can kind of 
dial it in now that you've got the the bigger parts done and you can kind of see a little bit better where there's areas that that might need some extra tlc or some extra little details to to make it pop so there we go finally then i'm just going to make another new layer down here and sign this guy and we will be done with today's tutorial so i see some other dots here on the side <laughs> that i've got to erase because we don't need those there we go so there you have it how to draw a beaver for the letter b the second in this 26 part tutorial series doing a different character different animal for every single letter of the alphabet hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video if you did do me a favor make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when i post new videos like the ones in this series or like other ones that we have planned for the channel so i want to say thanks for watching i appreciate it if you guys do follow along i really urge you to post the outcome uh, if you're on instagram or twitter or now threads which just launched uh, definitely post it on there share it and tag me at bj dell so i can check them out love to see your guys's work love to see what you come up with with following these so thanks so much uh, as for me i can also be found online bjdell.com and that's it for today's video once again appreciate you guys watching and until next time keep creating